back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to go over some of the actives and inactives for this week's upcoming games. We're going to talk about who's trending up and who might be trending down based on what we know and the new information of injuries. I'm going to try to cover as many of the key players as possible today to help you guys make the best decisions for your fantasy lineups. We're going to start with players that are trending down, and that is basically the entirety of the San Francisco 49er backfield. We know that Elijah Mitchell is dealing with a shoulder injury. J. Michael Hasty has a high ankle sprain, so that's not great. And Trey Sermon is coming off a concussion on his only carry last week. Now, Sermon looks like the best bet of the three and of the two that are going to play. We already know that Hasty has been ruled out and Mitchell is doubtful. I think Sermon is risky. But he has boom potential if he can see a Lions share the carries in a workload against Green Bay. T. Higgins is dealing with a shoulder issue. He is listed as doubtful. Now, I have read reports that say that he still may play in this game. But I think even if he does, he is risky. And I would better leave him on the bench than not. I think that this upgrades both Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. I would move Jamar Chase to that solid wide receiver two range and Boyd becomes a little bit of a risky wide receiver three with some upside. Amari Cooper is questionable with a rib injury. Now he probably is going to play. It's still a risky play against one of the top passing defenses in the league. He becomes a low end wide receiver too, but he does have some bust potential. We move on to the Colts wide receivers, Michael Pittman Jr. and Zach Pascal. Now Carson Wentz is questionable with injuries to both ankles. And the rookie out of Washington, Jacob Eason, would start most likely should Wentz miss this game. So we are downgrading them to low-end wide receiver threes if Wentz ends up sitting. Josh Jacobs still dealing with an ankle injury. He is doubtful and most likely will not play. I do not like Peyton Barber at all. And I think that even Kenyon Drake, who will probably see more touches, is a risky flex play at best, and I am benching both of these guys. We move to Minnesota, where Dalvin Cook is dealing with an ankle injury of his own. He will most likely play in this game because Mike Zimmer don't care, but I expect his workload to maybe be reduced a little bit, and I think that he's probably going to be playing at closer to 75% than he is at 100%. I don't think he should be available, but if Alexander Madison is sitting on your waivers, pick him up immediately. Not only did Antonio Brown test positive for COVID, but he also missed practice on Friday. And so I think it's very, very unlikely that he ends up playing in this game, which gives a slight uptick to Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, and the Gronk Monster. Dallas Goddard gets a slight decrease in our rankings because Zach Ertz was activated. It looks like he's going to play on Monday night. And then Deontay Johnson, he has officially been ruled out with a knee injury. I think that makes both Juju and Chase Claypool low-end wide receiver twos. And now let's go to some of the trending ups. And that starts where we stay in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger. He has a pectoral injury. He is going to play. And he actually does not have an injury designation heading into the game this week. Nuke Hopkins, dealing with a rib injury, gets the hapless Jags this week. It looks like he is very likely to play and potentially boom. Marquise Brown, still dealing with his ankle injury. It looks like he's going to play. He comes in with the same injury designation that he had last week when he went for 113 and a touchdown. He could boom this week again against the really suspect Lions defense. Quinta Cephas is going to see an extended role now that Tyrell Williams is out for a couple weeks. I think he's a high risk, high reward, wide receiver four. Now he does get a bottom three, Baltimore Ravens passing defense, and I would pick him up off of waivers if he is available, but start at your own risk. He was four of seven last week with 63 yards and a touchdown against the Packers. Sony Michelle stock is up because Daryl Henderson is still dealing with that rib injury and is likely to sit. However, Michelle does have a really tough matchup against that Tampa Bay front seven. And I think he's a very risky low end RB three at best better left on your bench. After being limited in practice all week, 
Damian Harris and his finger injury look to be okay and in line to start. Now, he does get New Orleans this week, who held run CMC to just three yards a carry on 24 carries last week. I think, however, that the volume will be enough for him to produce RB2 numbers. Joe Mixon gets a slight upgrade because TJ Watt, the stud defensive end for Pittsburgh, has officially been ruled out, so you love that for his prospects in the running game and in the passing game, potentially. With Russell Gage out for the Atlanta Falcons offense, it is full speed ahead for this boom game incoming for Calvin Ridley against the Giants. I think that also Kyle Pitts gets a slight upgrade as well. Odell Beckham Jr. looks like he is going to end up playing this Sunday, which is great news for Browns fans after they had to put Jarvis Landry on IR. Now, I think he's going to see an awesome target share in this game. I like him as a wide receiver three with upside against the Bears. For the first time this season, Saquon Barkley shreds his injury designation heading into the game. So I think that may signal a uptick in touches for him. I think he's still best treated as a higher end RB2 than he is a true RB1, but he could be in for a very solid day against a extremely weak Atlanta defense. Finally, we have DeAndre Swift. Now he should play in the early game, but we need to keep a close eye on it. Now if he does play, I think he has a high RB2 due to his volume and the fact that the Ravens front seven has been completely decimated by injuries and COVID. Now if he's out, I actually really like Jamal Williams as a high-end flex play this week against the Ravens. Now make sure you keep an eye out for our actives and inactives on Sunday morning. We're going to get that information out to you guys early so you can be fully prepared and set the best lineups possible. If you haven't done it yet, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.